I'm Helen Holmes and I am going to present some of my PhD work that was done at um, Rotham Said Research Brooms Barn. Um, I'm now working um, at, at ADAS um, based near Cambridge at Boxworth, um, if you want to get in touch with me in the future. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be talking about um, bolting resistance. I'll explain everything about what bolting is and why it's important in the sugar beet crop as I go along. Um, so just in case you've never been to a field of sugar beet and pulled one out of the ground before, um, that's what they look like. It's a massive, massive root. Um, it's white. It's about two, two kilos if you, if you hold it up. Um, and that's the, the root is the important uh, product uh, agriculturally. So the vegetative um, phase of growth um, is what's needed uh, for, to actually make the sugar. So I noticed in Harp Adams, um, that the sugar is actually, it says Tate and Lyle on it. That isn't um, silver spoon. Silver spoon is all the sugar that you'll see in the supermarket that's actually from beet sugar. So about 50% of uh, sugar in the UK that's used um, is from uh, domestic production from sugar beet and the rest is uh, sugar cane. So half random, you, you should sort that out. <laughs> um, so um, sugar beet uh, in the UK is sown as a spring sown crop. Um, so farmers are drilling at the moment, hopefully finishing soon. Um, and then the roots, which I mentioned, is where the sugar is. About 20% sugar in those roots. They're harvested in autumn time and taken to British sugar, uh, sugar factories, and then they make sugar out of them. Um, so what can actually happen? Um, so we heard all about uh, winter annuals from Caroline Dean this morning. And of course, there's no biennials in uh, Arabidopsis, I don't think. Um, but sugar beet is actually a biennial plant that's programmed a bit like um, a winter annual. So it's programmed to go into its reproductive phase of growth after it feels a prolonged period of cold. Um, and yeah, in the wild, this, is, this would normally happen over winter. But what can happen um, in sugar beet crops if you have a prolonged period of cold in, summer in, sorry, in springtime, where after the plants have been drilled, after the seeds have been drilled, um, you can then get um, promotion of bolting, that is the extension of this reproductive um, shoot with their seeds and flowers on it um, in the summertime when the days get longer. And this is a problem in the sugar beet crops. Um, the bolts actually, uh, you can imagine they're tall, they can get as tall as me, and they're shading out uh, the rest of the crop. Um, and if I pulled that one up out of the field, uh, the root at the bottom is shrunken, it's not two kilos, it's not got a high sugar content. So wouldn't it be great if we could breed this problem out, out of the sugar beet crop altogether? Um, so, um, the first section of the story today is uh, the lab, um, and this is uh, one of the results that I had um, from the lab side of my PhD. Um, we were looking uh, in the group at Brooms Barn Rotham said Research, we were looking um, at the plant hormone gibberellin, because um, this has been shown to be a promoter of flowering, um, and also it has been shown to promote flowering in sugar beet previously, so it was a good candidate to look at. Um, and what I did was uh, took plants and uh, uh, biennial sugar beet plants, grew those in a vernalization time course, um, and had a look um, at the gibberellin uh, biosynthesis enzymes. And I'll show you uh, qPCR results now um, from one of those enzymes. Um, and so as you can see along the x-axis, I've just got time, and I've got um, up to 18 weeks vernalization, which is uh, in short days and at six degrees C. And then after that, I would bring the plants out into long days and ambient temperatures so they could then bolt and flower. Um, and the expression of this enzyme, uh, GA20OX2, it's just one of the penultimate uh, enzymes in the biosynthesis pathway for gibberellin in sugar beet, and it's also rate limiting as well in the process. Um, I could see that the expression of this gene um, was very low um, at the beginning of vernalization here, but expression increased uh, up to a maximum starting at about 12 weeks of vernalization. And at 12 weeks of vernalization, um, sugar beet plants are generally, um, sugar beet plants are then committed um, to bolt and flower um, later in the season. So that 12 weeks of uh, vernalization treatment is what's known as the vernalization requirement, as in the minimum amount of prolonged cold exposure I, I, I could give these plants to them for then for them to be um, committed to bolting and flowering later in the season. Um, and with this information, um, I think it would be great uh, to be translated into a, a marker. So what I could effectively do is just push uh, the response of that um, GA20OX2 gene to just be upregulated later 
later on in the uh, vernalization time course. So as in it wouldn't, it wouldn't even come up at 18 weeks vernalization, a bit like the, um, the Swedish uh, Arabidopsis plants that Caroline Dean talked about this morning that needed more vernalization to then um, bolt and flower. So that's um, something quite promising. Um, so um, what, what could I do with that information? Um, what I could actually make um, with that uh, breeding marker information is a plant that you could sow a lot earlier. Now that could be sown earlier in spring um, because you wouldn't have to worry about any vernalization happening or you could even sow that in actually in winter time and change the whole sugar beet calendar as you can see there. Instead of having a spring sown crop you could have a winter sown crop um, and some modelling was done at Broom's Barn um, that showed that you could get about 26% yield increase um, from sowing a winter crop um, compared to the current practice of uh, sowing as a spring crop. And that's simply because of uh, canopy closure. Um, the main limiting factor for sugar production in sugar beet is uh, capture of sunlight. And if your leaves are out for longer, you're going to catch more sunlight and get more, get more sugar. And as you can see, the um, spring beet, uh, the canopy's got a lot of catching up to do uh, to winter beet when, you, when it's grown. So, um, I was interested to know um, what UK growers actually thought of this new and novel use of uh, sugar beet in the UK um, and how that would actually fit in on farm to their rotations. Um, I did a survey for about 200 growers, giving them the information I've just given you, given you now uh, about yield increase. Um, and only 31% of, of those people uh, said, yep, yeah, winter sugar beet, I'll go for that. Um, and the rest were a bit uh, hesitant. Um, so I needed to investigate what the problems were um, and I, so I asked them um, what the current uses of uh, spring sown sugar beet were in their rotations at the moment. Um, so I'm just going to show you uh, percentage of respondents up the y-axis there and then the different factors that I'll go through on the x-axis. Um, and the first one that you can see is that uh, they s stated that sugar beet was a really important break crop for them. Um, so beets grown in the east of, uh, east of the UK, east of England, um, and in that area there's a lot of uh, cereal growing, a lot of winter sown crops, uh, a lot of oilseed rape, and it's really useful as part of their integrated crop management to have a spring sown crop in there. Um, so that was one of the main things that they were using sugar beet for. Um, and a, a main factor within that, which actually came up as the second most cited um, uh, useful uh, trait of spring sown sugar beet was black grass control. So this weed is rife in areas that have heavy land, uh, that have predominantly winter sown crops um, and in some areas say in Suffolk um, some of that land will be used for sugar beet um, cultivation as well and so that was something that growers would like to use that spring sown sugar beet crop to do um, to get on top of black grass. Um, then we've got some other factors in there, uh, money was a factor and uh, so that's the way that the sugar beet um, pricing is sorted out. Um, but I wanted to mention that workload came into it as well. So obviously changing around that farming calendar changes when um, operations are done on farm and the spread of workload uh, amongst the farm workers would be something that needed to be looked at as well. So all of these problems do have answers, um, but by doing this survey I was able to highlight what the problems would be according to the UK, wheat gr uh, UK beet grower um, and yeah, that just so they need to be addressed. All right, so um, yeah, just to summarize, uh, there's a main problem um, in sugar beet uh, cultivation at the moment in the UK it, that, um, that is bolting caused by vernalization of crops um, that are biennials um, early in spring. Um, there's a breeding marker that came out of my PhD research um, that could be used to um, generate uh, winter sown um, sugar beet crops and that's a marker that was uh, involved in uh, gibberellin um, biosynthesis um, and yeah I've highlighted some of the problems that might need to be addressed um, in introducing a winter sown beet crop into the UK. All right thanks very much to all my sponsors. Oh and yourself yeah thanks. <laughs>